Hello and welcome again Hello. to another <laughs> episode of Battle Ready. And today we thought we would do a little wish listing. Wish listing. So we've done this before on a couple of battle tomes, and we thought we would take a stab at the 4.0 wish list. So what do we want to see from Age of Sigmar Fourth Edition? I have three ideas. Well, the reason we're talking about this is we know that you know we've got a probably about a year. Until the new one comes, we're on that three-year cycle. And, uh, Unless they make it like four or five years. So far, I mean, we started in 2.0, but when I compare that to original recipe, it was way better. The rules are just way better. Mm -hmm. And then going to 3.0, I think the rules are better okay. than they were in 2.0. There's a little bit more complication. It's bloating. But overall, I've seen just, you know, and then the battle tomes have been steadily oh. improving as well. Yes. So we, what we wanted to talk about is things that we would like to see to improve the game in the next edition. We have a couple of ideas. Drake, do you want to start us off? Uh, I was thinking something to attract newer players, like some mini game, 500 point uh, battle pack, something that won't be that hard. Either that or like, uh, you know, like 40 has those combat patrols, something like that. Something like Combat Patrol would be really cool. And the, the reason I like Combat Patrol isn't just because you buy a box and then you play. But it's you buy a box, there's no list building. At least what we know about it so far. There's no list building. And then, so you just buy it and you, get to, you build what's in there. You don't have to worry about what, you know, what gun you're going to put on somebody, you know, what version. You just build what's in there. And then they actually have different um, War Scrolls. That have or different uh, whatever powers. Whatever they're called. Data sheets. Same. But yeah, yeah that's why I said Bushball. Um, But they have different ones for combat patrol. So that way, um, if your guy would be just a little bit too powerful in a 500 point game or 600 point or however many points they are roughly, mm -hmm. your guy would be a little bit too powerful. Well, his data sheet for combat patrol is a little bit weaker. Or he would be a little bit too weak, right? So to buff it up so that you are on a more competitive footing with everybody else, his data sheet's a little bit stronger. I really like that idea. I think it would be really cool to see something like that in AOS. Mm -hmm. So my first thing that I'd love to see is sort of a quality of life improvement, and that is monstrous rampages. I hate monstrous rampages that occur at the end of a phase, which is all of them. Because <laughs> I just, I forget, I forget. By the time we're done charging, I've been like, charged all my monsters. You're ready to stab things. Or sometimes my monsters haven't even charged, right? Because they they were they're still in combat from last turn. I'm just ready to get on. The, yeah, I'm ready to get on to the fighting. The fighting is the fun part, right? That's the cool part. So I forget. Step, 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 step. My monsters' actions all the time. I sort of remember them. Drake is much better at remembering them. Because monsters actions stomp and roar. Those are the only ones you use. <laughs> Those are the good ones. <laughs> so I think that I would like to see the monster. I would change them so that. You only get them, so you get them when you charge, just like impact hits. Because we always remember impact hits. Yeah. Almost always remember impact I hits. I know. I'm not as good with impact hits. Because it's like I'm, it's in, it's in the midst of the charge, right? It's, it's not delayed. I would love to see the same thing for Monsters Rampages, where as you charge, you get to roar. As you charge, you get to stop isn't whatever that, it is. But uh, isn't that um, what the uh, Mango Squig's power giant boing is? It's as soon as you charge, only a Mango Squig who has charged can do this. No. You can really make a 3d6. I mean, I don't think so. I think you still have to wait till the end of the phase, but then you get to do your giant point. Mm. Usually I do my giant point as soon as I finish charging. Yeah, maybe. So that's mine. What else do you have? Uh, one of the ones I have is they need to fix cover. Yeah, we both agree. Terrain, the terrain rules as written, we sort of adopted our own style. Yep. But the terrain rules as written are just not good. Super great. So we never use the mystical terrain stuff. No. It just it's more things to remember and nah. Um, but the way cover works right now is very difficult. And I wish that they would just say, all right, blanket rule. First of all, no climbing. Unless it's something that has stairs or a ladder or it's a hill. You know, something that you would reasonably be able to walk on. Yeah, something that you could no, walk up. No models just on the sides of sheer wall cliffs and buildings. Yeah. I mean, none of that. And I would say that, look, if you draw a line between any two things and it covers um, any part of the model, then they hit, the model has cover. Or uh, the way I would write it is if the model, if a body, if a model's body part is sticking out, you can shoot at it. But if like a little itty bitty sword is sticking out, can't shoot at it. 
Yeah, for, That's how I would for have true it. line of sight. Yeah, I think true line of sight brings us a lot of problems, and maybe there's a way to fix that anyway. But if we're going to keep that, I would say if there's stuff, something in the way, they get covered. So it's minus one to be hit or whatever. Yeah, but the thing is, if they're like, if this is a piece of terrain, right? If our little stupid dude was right here, right, and our archer was like right here, right, this guy would be in cover. Yeah, because his leg is in that little section. So even though he's basically standing out in the open. Slow pe- this little mini rock jutting thing is keeping them in cover. Yeah. So I don't think I don't agree with that. I agree with my one. <laughs> okay. Well, I th- I think that no matter what you have, you're going to have problems problems with it. But I would like to see that where I would just like to train to matter more, because right now you could have all kinds of terrain in the world, but if you see a, the edge of somebody's sword, they're shootable, and you probably don't have cover, right? So I would rather get rid of that. And then I would make some terrain, you could give it a keyword like, you know, obscuring Scalable. or whatever and obscuring. And then you would say, hey, look, if if the line between my guy's eyes and your base goes through this terrain, they can't see each other. Right. It's just like the woods are too thick. Or misty. Or misty, the, maybe. the building, even if you are halfway exposed or whatever, the building's just shrouded in darkness or whatever. And so you can't see. Well, you can make up whatever thing. But I would have some terrain just be obscuring, right? If you're behind it, that's it. You, you it's not just cover; it's can't be shot. Yeah, but and, I feel like that might be a little bit powerful. Because well, you wouldn't give that to every terrain. You would just I have know. certain terrains that did that. I would just like flatline. First of all, jettison those uh, mystical terrain rules into the sun. Okay. Those things are stupid. Okay. Second of all, I think if this is supposed to be a war game, it is fantasy war game. Granted, but if this is supposed to be a war game, we need to treat it like it's a war game. Okay, what do you mean? Therefore, if a man's, if there's a man's here and a wall here, he shouldn't be in cover. Okay, we got we got your example, <laughs> buddy. We got it. We understand what you're saying. And but what I'm saying is, it's it also doesn't make sense to say that you know if you can see any minuscule piece of him, you can shoot him the same as if he is out in the open, yes. right? And then what you could do is say, well, if you can see 50% of the model or more, if, if you see 50% or less, then he's in cover. I mean, there's things you could say, although that might lead to some arguments. Like, that's not that's only 40% of the model, yeah. right? So, you know, at some point you have to remember it's a game, right? But, yeah, I think that they need to make cover and obscuring things that are just, they're just keywords mm-hmm. that you can decide with your homemade terrain. That's what these things are. And maybe you could, like, roll and say, this is obscuring, this is... Sure. Another, and adding on to cover, mm-hmm. if we're allowing, uh, like, if there's steps or a ladder or, like, a gangway hatch mm-hmm. or something like that where if it was real life, you could definitely get up that. Sure. Um, I feel like, like, if there's a little platform with an archer up here mm-hmm. and a man's up here with a man in, behind here, if the archer was on the ground, he'd be in cover. But since it's up, the line of sight's pointing down so he can shoot him. Sure. Sure. Yeah. So... Um, Same thing with boats. The boats. All those things are, are good. I think probably my number one change that I would like to see is a change to Battleshock. I really dislike the way Battleshock works in the current system, and I, I would like to see a big change. So some people have talked about adopting sort of a 40K-ish. So I don't know all the ins and outs, but the general the gist of it is if your guys fail Battleshock, they can't contest objectives. Hmm. So you could do that. You could do something like that. Or you could say, hey, you can't be commanded. Or, hey, so you know all out attack and all the defense if you failed Battleshock the next last turn, right? Uh, you can do all kinds of stuff like that. And um, having your models run is never super fun because it's like, oh, man, I'm losing guys to not combat, right? If you lose guys when you fight, that's the game. That's what we're all here to do. We're all here to, like, mm-hmm. attack our, other, our friend's stuff and, and kill them. But when your models aren't killed from that, they just sort of leave the table because you because of a die roll. Ugh, doesn't feel good. The way I would rework that mm-hmm. is, um, I would do like however many you go above your bravery characteristic. They can't contest objectives, can't uh, receive commands, mm-hmm. and like the whole unit gets half the movement because they try to lug their friend, their terrified friends on. Maybe I mean those are all good ideas, and I but I think that. The current system, 
the thing I like least about it is that it's it's really blunt. Yeah. And by that I mean, if you have a most elite things that are hard to kill, where you only kill like one or two of them, they have a bravery of like seven or eight. So it doesn't typically matter. And then things that are easy to kill usually have a bravery of like five or six, where it totally matters. Either that, but like that that thing, except that's a whole glue spiral. <laughs> And then it's all in a die roll, right? So maybe I've lost models one less than my bravery. Now I roll a die. On a one, I'm fine. But on a six, five more models run away? That's a huge, that's a huge spread based maybe, on a single die roll. Maybe what I would do is uh, the way Battle Shock would work is they have, if they, you take a damage almost. Mm hmm or like, you roll a die, you add that. So first, wait, hold on. So what you do? Well, okay, get your okay. thoughts. Okay. Think about okay. it in your head. Okay. So what you do? You roll. So, say I lose three guys out of a ten man unit, and the bravery is seven. Okay. I roll a die, and I roll a four. Okay. So that's seven equal to their bravery. Sure. So we put a seven. So we put a seven die on their bravery. Okay. And for every tick up, they like take up a damage or something. Yeah, I mean, there's lots of different things you could do, right? I'm not, I'm not super yeah. committed to one thing over the other, um, but I think running models is bad, and I think running models on a D6 is bad because it's just, it's just too big, mm -hmm. and especially with something like rock guts, oh, right? Sad, Where you, sad, you sad. lose one rock gut, but they, because their bravery is five, that die roll might mean you lose two more, right? Sad. They were, they didn't die in combat. They didn't have a chance to stop the the damage with their ward. Right, they didn't get any of that. You just had one bad die roll, and you lost the whole unit. That's that's really rough. Rough. So I would like to see it reworked, where it wasn't so as impactful as it as it is, where one die roll means you're losing that many models. Maybe you could do something where that's like that much damage. You lose that many models if the wounds characteristic is three or less. And you lose half that many models if the wounds characteristic is four. But it has to be like rounding up or down. Well, yeah, I mean, they figure it out, right? We don't need to. We're not creating it right here, right? We're just like we're throwing it. We're think. just throwing stuff out there. But losing losing that many models on a die roll is something I really dislike. Mm -hmm. What else you got? Nothing. There you good. Yep. After that, after after that, it's all perfect. Yep. I don't see anything else. Well, I think, you know, those would Oh, be... wait. No, I remember. You got one? Okay. I feel like they should make 3,000-point games a real thing. Not... <laughs> have some kind of support for 3,000 points? Yes! They well... want to support 2,000? Why not bump it up one more? I always find, like... <laughs> well, you know, there's certainly nothing stopping people from already playing 3,000 points. In a sense, I mean, like, in the list building... You can have you can build up to three thousand points, but when you're dropping them, you have to have about a thousand points set up in almost reserve. Mm -hmm. So when a thousand points worth of your army dies, you can bring in that thousand point on like your territory edge. Interesting. Yeah, I think one of the things that the two the three point book barely does is it has the tunnel fighting, the siege. And something else, right? Where is the siege rules anyway? I still haven't seen this. It's a very, very that was like the last page of the book. <laughs> um, and so, seeing support for alternate modes of play would be great. And my yeah. actually, my last thing that I would love to see is right now, almost all the battle plans are objectives. Get, yeah. get objectives, sit on objectives. When can you contest objectives? Putting objectives on, pulling objectives off. And that's fine. And especially if you're looking for tournament play, where everything is more or less even, right? That that makes sense. But I would really love to see a lot more emphasis put on like ho like one army's holding these ruins while another army comes to attack them. Sure. Or but holding this mine. I think that the in the book, in the core rule book, there are six Path to Glory narrative battle plans, and I think those ones are all pretty fun. There's yeah, like where you're one. Person's holding something, and the person's coming in. Sure, there's one where one is doing a ritual, and the other one is coming in to try to take over the ritual, disrupt the ritual. There's one where one army is trying to make it through to the other end of mm -hmm. the battlefield, 
and the other army is coming in to trying to stop them and fight them. So the first army is not even trying to fight necessarily. They're trying to break through, right? There's and so, But you're doing all kinds of different things. The ones where you know half your army starts up and it's being attacked and then the other half comes in as reinforcements to rescue. There's all kinds of cool Except stuff like that. Except the fact like that. that when dad rolls, they never come. Yeah, they never come when I come. <laughs> but there's all kinds of cool, interesting ideas like that that just don't use or very minimally use objectives. And I would love to see a lot more support. When they come out with a general's handbook for tournament play, which is great, I think we love a yeah. lot of those battle plans. I think we it's very fun. We enjoy our 2,000-point match play games. Oh, yeah. But I would really like to see something more like that narrative book. Like come out with a, you know, a narrative general's handbook with 12 battle plans of narrative style things where mm -hmm. you're given an objective, right? You're, it's whoever, who can get to the middle and grab the sacred relic and then pull it to their side, right? And some of the open play ones are a little bit like that, but uh, open play gets a lot of, it's sort of a bad rap. But um, yeah, I would really like to see narrative battle, battle plans that tell a story. It doesn't necessarily have to be part of a campaign, although you could play it as part of a campaign, I'm sure. But just battle, a battle that tells a story more than, hey, I stepped on this piece of ground while you didn't. <laughs> right? How about a battle plan that's like, yeah, remember when I disrupted your ritual? Remember when I took over the tower that you were defending to the last man? Remember when I, you know, that sort of thing. I do. I mean, I do remember when Alinda killed Sigwald. That was fun. Oh, yeah. There's plenty of great moments all throughout Warhammer. I'm not saying match play is devoid of moments. <laughs> I'm just saying that it would be nice to have some, some goals more than stand in this place. <laughs> and as long as we're talking about that, you know, when it comes, I think that um, battalions, war scroll battalions, uh, not war scroll battalions, but just normal uh, battalions, I think those should mostly be fact, uh, battle plan specific. I don't know that we need core battalions, especially because like all but three are never used right now. I wanna, At least we've never used them. I want to bring back, I mean, I know you have uh, army battalions that you can throw in. Mm hmm but I want to bring back, like, you know how in open play they always, like, give out, like, in the Gloom Spy book, there's, like, Scrugrat's Conquerors, where it shows, like, sure. Scrugrat the Loon King and then all his minions. Mm -hmm. I would love to see something like that, or, like, that is another uh, mini campaign. That almost. might actually go better with your 3,000 point, because maybe... That's actually 3,000 points, right? Because a lot of those battalions are very, very big, because they have so many units, so mm -hmm. you couldn't even play them in a 2,000 point game. But maybe if we did a 3,000 point, we could do, like, the Loon King's Court. I think it's called Scrugart's Conquerors. Whatever. Yeah, I know. That's not the important part. Versus Marathi's, you know, Snake Ladies or whatever. Yes. Right? That'd be fun. So I think that would be cool. Yeah, big board. And then also, I don't, I'm not a big, hugest fan of battle tactics, at least not as currently implemented. I would really like to see them... Um, changed. Changed. I think that right now... Almost all the battle tactics are asking you to do things you wanted to do anyway, like take over objectives or kill units. Well, not uh, I always wanted to, desecrate. Yeah, I mean, there's a couple that are a little bit different, but I would like to see them all be different. Just having you different things. Maybe you want to have um, sacrificing something unit. in every corner of a battlefield. Maybe you want to lose a unit. Maybe you want to um, run a unit, run a hero off the battlefield. Right, stuff that is not going to help you take objectives, right? It's at, And maybe even like that actively hurts your chance to take objectives. But you're going to do it for the battle tactic because of some great wartime thing, but it's going to get you points separate. So it's it's causing you to do separate things. And now people have talked about rather than, you know, maybe you start with a, a hidden set of battle tactics at the beginning and then the opponent doesn't know which one you're choosing. I mean, there's all kinds of things you can do, right? So all kinds of ways you could do battle tactics different. But I think just making them be something different than the things you already want to do. Yeah. Make That's them, what the uh, make them be book tactics do. Some of them. But even then, there's like kill your kill the opponent's general and stuff like that. It's like, really? well, well I, I already wanted to kill the general. <laughs> so you I, ain't so big. I, kill a monster with a trog off. Yeah, I, yeah exactly. Funny. You already want to kill a monster, right? Yeah, but with trogs. Yeah. So I think I would like to see them be just totally different. You're the completely different goals. Right? You might want to stand in, in this spot on this objective for the battle plan, but my battle tactic might be to 
you know, get three units into my opponent's territory, right? My battle tactic might be to run somebody off the board because they've, you know, we're, we're covering his retreat, right? He's running back to Sigmar to get reinforcements or whatever, and my, the rest of my Stormcast are covering his retreat. So by running him off the board, I'm going to get my two points for battle tactics or whatever. I would love to see stuff more like that. Any final thoughts? Um, I think we've covered everything. All right. Well, we're excited. I mean, 4.0 is a year out. We're, you know, I think we've got a lot of games of 3.0 left. We're certainly excited to play a lot more 3.0 and to uh, record it and put it up for our channel. Yeah. But, um, yeah, if you have, I know uh, Warhammer Weekly recently did a 4.0 wish listing. They had a lot of good ideas as well. Oh, wait, I just, I if just you have, something. all right, do one second. If you have something that you want to put in, please put it in the comments below. I would love to see what people's desires are for things mechanically. Maybe not army specific, but just as a system. What would you like to see? change in the system all right your final final one um i would like to see lore spat, spat out at us more periodically oh that is a good that is a good call i also would like to see the lore yeah. advance more than it's way has. more way more now i know that you know the covid things probably mess some Let's stuff up but i would love to see you know frankly that's something that they could use white dwarf for is you put in the white dwarf on a monthly basis several short stories of what's been happening of what's going on here oh you know the january uh white dwarf what's been happening in excelsis has stuff from stormcast uh soul blight and gloom spike and gloom spike then february has sylvaneth fire slayers and Scape. plays of darkness right whatever right and so each each month you pick three factions and have those narratives actually Affecting the world. Advance the plot. Maybe not a big advance. Maybe not like Broken Realms where people are becoming gods and stuff. Right? <laughs> maybe that. Maybe not there. But things where you get a feel of how are the Skaven reacting to Kragnos being around and smashing things. Yeah. How are it has the to be bad, like Ideneth that. reacting to the fact that um, Marathi. Marathi, they've got this alliance with Marathi now. And the thing that could have killed them, that Teclis had, the lantern, that's been broken. So does that embolden them to do more things? And if so, what are they doing? You know, stuff like that where you could see a little bit of the world well, like how the, and all the focus would be on how those factions are reacting to what's Broken Realms. And then as we get closer to the new edition, you could have how those fractions are gearing up for next whatever the next Broken, whether it's Harbingers or whether it's something else. I think the... Dawnbringer Crusades, I guess. I think the next thing... Like 4.0's thing, like the big bad. We've always had a big bad, chaos. Yeah, who would you like to see? I would like an Order Civil War. I think I would love to see Malarian and for an Order Civil War. I don't think we've seen many, much in the way of hints mm -hmm. for that, but having an Order versus yeah. Order would be super cool. And on the off chance, I'm guessing for 5.0. <laughs> Well, if it, why if, don't we wait? Why don't we hold our 5.0 no, wish list? No, wait. <laughs> Let me just keep switching. All right, one thing. I feel like maybe 5.0 might be Slanish breaking out of his prison. That would be cool. Because All right. might be chaos. Well, like I said, in the comments, let us know what you think in terms of what you'd like to see for, uh, for the next edition. What are your hopes? What are your fears? And uh, this has been another episode of Battle Ready. Ready. Thanks so much for watching. Yeah.